Before I discuss the graph of y equals ln of x, which means log to the base e of x, I want to look at the graph of the function y equals e to the power of x. Let's see what the value of the function is at x equals 0. When x equals 0, y equals e to the power of 0, which is 1, because any number to the power of 0 is 1. So we have to point 0, 1 on the graph. So we go to x equals 0, go up to 1. What about when x equals 1? What do we have? Well, we have y equals e to the power of 1, which is just e. To three decimal places, that number is 2.718. By the way, there is no pattern in the decimal expansion of e, which means that e cannot be written as a fraction. e is not a rational number. It's an irrational number. So when x is 1, you see that y is roughly 2.7. So we have this point here, so we go up to 2.7 on the y-axis. What about when x equals 2? Well, we have y equals e to the power of 2, so that's about 2.718 squared. Um, so, you know, that's a number that's close to 9. So we can see that for positive x, the function y equals e to the power of x is an increasing function. Another way we know that it's an increasing function is if we look at the derivative of e to the power of x. We saw in earlier videos that the derivative is just itself. So you can see that if the derivative is actually positive, it's a positive number. It's actually positive for all x, even for values of x that are negative. Um, if you put 2.7 to the power of any number, you'll get a positive number, which tells us that the slopes of tangents to the function are always positive. So for example, the slope, the tangent here looks like this. It is a positive slope, which tells us that the graph is an increasing, is an increasing function. So for any point on the graph, the slope of the tangent is positive. The derivative is always positive for all values of x. You see, even if x is, say, negative, if x is minus 1, well, e to the power of minus 1 is just 1 over e to the power of plus 1, which is a positive number, because e is a positive number, e is 2.7. If x equals minus 1, we have y equals e to the power of minus 1, which is 1 over e to the power of plus 1. That's approximately 0 0.4. So we go to minus 1 on the x-axis and up to about 0 0.4. It's 0 0.4 to one decimal place. If x equals minus 2, we have y equals e to the power of minus 2, which is 1 over e squared, which is even smaller than 0 0.4. So um, what's happening here is we see that the graph of y equals e to the power of x is approaching the x-axis as x tends towards negative infinity. As x tends towards negative infinity, y will tend towards 0. So that arrow indicates that the graph of y equals e to the power of x is approaching the x-axis but never crosses it. So the y-values are getting smaller and smaller and smaller as the x-values become large, more, more and more negative. So the x-axis is an asymptote for the graph of y equals e to the power of x. Now let's look at the function y equals ln of x ln of x means log to the base e of x. Uh, L and n, I think, are Latin for logarithmus natur naturel, um, or naturalis, I think, whatever, um, natural logarithms. Um, the reason they're called natural logarithms is because they arise so often in mathematics, and also because uh, both of these functions, y equals e to the x and y equals ln of x, are used to model things like population growth and you know, natural phenomena and so on, um, radioactive decay and so on. You can see that if y equals log to the base e of x, then e to the power of y must equal x. That's just the definition of the log function. If we put this base to the power of this number here, we get the argument of the log, of the log function. In this function here, we could say that x is the dependent variable. It depends on y. But I can just interchange these to make y the dependent variable. 
so y equals e to the x. So what what we've learned is that the function y equals log to the base e of x is the inverse function of y equals e to the power of x. So that means, for example, if since 0, 1 is a point on the graph of y equals e to the power of x, then 1, 0, which is got by swapping these coordinates, will be a point on the graph of y equals ln of x. Um, another example is the point 1e. 1, comma e is a point on y equals e to the x, and we just swap these coordinates to get the point e1. In order to construct the graph of y equals ln of x, we could draw in the line y equals x and reflect points on y equals e to the power of x through that line. So if we reflect 0, 1 through the line, we get the point 1, 0. So we just get the image of 0, 1 under axial symmetry in the line y equals x. The line y equals x makes an angle of 45 degrees with the positive x-axis. If we reflect 1e through that line, that means we pass through the line at 90 degrees and we go out the same, make these distances the same. Uh, then we get the point e1 on the graph of y equals ln of x and so on. You can see what's happening here. Say for this point here, if we reflect it through, we get this point here. So we just switch these coordinates so the y value of this point is now minus 3. So what's happening as x tends towards minus infinity is that the y values here will tend towards minus infinity. Um, so as x tends towards 0 we see that ln of x is tending towards minus infinity. So notice that for the function y equals ln of x, x has to be a positive number. We see that by reflection through the line, that um, the x values of all these points are positive. So we're not, we won't have, to, we won't see the graph of y equals ln, ln of x cross over into this quadrant here, because the x values have to be positive. Now. Um, well, another way to see that is if you tr try to get, say, ln of some negative number. ln of minus 3 means log to the base e of minus 3. Let's suppose that's equal to y. So that would mean that e to the power of y equals minus 3. But um, there is no such number. Because e to the power of y is always a positive number. E itself is positive. E is plus 2.7, roughly. And when we take a positive number and raise it to any number, positive or negative, we get a positive number. So the log function, or ln function, log to the base E, is only defined for positive values of x. So sometimes to emphasize that the argument of the ln function is positive, you'll see absolute value lines indicating that we must have a positive quantity here. Now let's look at the derivative dy dx of the function y equals ln of x. Um, I will use implicit differentiation here. So what I will do is take y equals ln of x or log to the base e of x and rewrite it as e to the power of y equals x. Now we want to get dy dx, so what I will do now is differentiate both sides of this with respect to x. So I'll differentiate e to the power of y with respect to x, and then I do the same to the right hand side. Differentiate x with respect to x. You can put x in brackets if you like. Now, what's the derivative of e to the power of y with respect to x? So this here is, is not given explicitly as a function of x. It's, um, it's given explicitly as a function of y or implicitly as a function of x. y is a function of x, of course. So we have to use the chain rule. 
to do this derivative. So it's like differentiating e to the power of, say, an expression in brackets. We first of all take a look at the entire function. It's e to the power of something. When we differentiate e to the power of something, we just get that e to the power of something. But by the chain rule, we must multiply by the derivative of the power. So we differentiate the power, which is y, with respect to x. So this is what we want to find. Now what about the right-hand side? Well, the right-hand side is straightforward. We're differentiating 1x with respect to x. That just gives us 1. So you see now that dy dx is 1 divided by e to the power of y. But we can get dy dx as a function of x by realizing that e to the power of y is just x. So here's the answer. So the derivative with respect to x of ln of x is 1 over x. So this is a standard derivative. This is given in tables. So suppose, for example, that we want the slope of the tangent to y equals ln of x at x equals 2. So we want the slope of the tangent at this point here. Well, the slope of a tangent is dy dx. But if we want to find it at x equals 2, we just plug 2 in here, so we get a half. So the slope of this line here is a half. So that means that if we increase x by, say, 2, then y will increase by 1. So we'll have 1 over 2. So rise over run will be a half. So you can see what's going to happen if we take a value of x that's very close to 0. Um, like, say we want the slope of a tangent at this point here. Tangent is almost a vertical line, actually. So that's getting dy dx at x equals 1 over e cubed. So that's going to be equal to 1 over x with x replaced by 1 over e cubed. That's just e cubed. 1 divided by 1 over e cubed is 1 times e cubed, which is quite a large slope. It's 2.7, roughly 2.7 to the power of 3. So you can see what happens as x gets closer and closer to 0, like if we took x equals 1 over e to the power of 9, which is even smaller, then um, the derivative will be e to the power of 9, which is much larger slope again, roughly 2.7 to the power of 9. So the slopes of the lines are heading towards infinity. As x approaches 0 from the right, it makes no sense to approach 0 from the left because the function is not, the function y equals ln of x is not defined for negative values of x. Suppose we want to differentiate y equals ln of 2x. Well, we can use the chain rule. We can let u equal 2x, which means our function now is y equals ln of u. We can get dy du. Well, we just put 1 over the argument, so we just get 1 over u. Okay, um, it's, it's just the same as the derivative of ln of x, just x has been replaced with the letter u. That's all. We can get du dx from this. du dx is... 2. So to get dy du, we just, sorry, um, dy dx, we just multiply dy du by du dx. Okay, these behave like fractions. Um, dy du is 1 over u. Well, u is just, um, u is 2x, so we have 1 over 2x. That's what, 1 over u, this is 1 over u du dx is 2. So we end up getting 1 over x. So um, even if y equals ln ax, or a is any number, then dy dx will work out to be 1 over the argument times the derivative of the argument, which is a, and it'll just work out to 1 over x. So it doesn't matter what a is. Suppose we want to differentiate this. Well, I could go through the chain rule again. I could let this equal ln of u. I could get dy du, which is 1 over u. Then get du dx, which would be 6x squared. And then multiply dy du by du dx. But I'll just tell you what to do in words. When you want to differentiate ln, ln of something, what you do is you put 1 over the argument. 
and then multiply by the derivative of the argument with respect to x. The derivative of 2x cubed plus 3 with respect to x is 6x squared. So we get 6x squared over 2x cubed plus 3. Here's another example. dy dx is 1 over the argument. The argument is sine x in this case. And we multiply by the derivative of sine x with respect to x, which is cos x. So that's equal to cos x over sine x. That's actually equal to 1 over tan x. Because tan of x is sine x over cos x. 1 over tan of x is sometimes written as cotan of x.